meatless meatballs to go with, you know, spaghetti sauce, like the previous video that we made that was spaghetti sauce. Trust me, go watch that and make these meatballs and put them together, spaghetti and meatballs. It's a wonderful combination. Anyway, we have a whole bunch of stuff here and I have to give credit where credit is due. I basically copied Sauce Dash's recipe for ground meat with some modifications and turn them into meatballs. So we're gonna go there. So first, you need textured vegetable protein, which is a soy product. So if you are allergic to soy, you probably wanna use something else. I don't really know of anything offhand. I'm gonna be making half a batch. So I'm making half a pound of meatballs. I'm gonna use half a cup of textured vegetable protein. To that, I'm going to add half a teaspoon of beetroot powder. Now this is kind of like an earthy, I mean, it's, it's dried up beets that have been ground. So it's very earthy. It's got a little bit of a flavor, but it's mostly for color. Then I need two and a half teaspoons of methyl cellulose. Now, why are you using methyl cellulose? It's a binder. It mm. works kind of like psyllium husks okay. um, in a lot of things. It, it's uh, very fibrous. I mean, it's cellulose, you know? So it absorbs a lot of liquid very, very quickly, and it helps to stick it together and bind it together. It's also basically like pure fiber, so. I'm also gonna be adding some powdered protein. Now, this can come in a couple different versions. You can use naked pea, pea protein like we're using, and I need like a tablespoon, so I'm gonna just use like a teaspoon and a half here. You all know that a tablespoon is just three teaspoons, right? So if I confuse you in a full recipe, he would need the tablespoon, exactly. but we're halving it today. This is another ingredient that I really got the idea from Sauce Dash. I gotta give him credit. It's mushroom seasoning. And normally I would use one and a half teaspoons in, for the full batch. I'm just gonna use one teaspoon because, well, we're making meatballs, so we want to have that flavor burst, right? This adds like an umami unctuousness that would be missing if you didn't add it. Next comes nutritional yeast. I'm not even gonna measure this. Um, you can pretty much put in as much as you want. This will give like almost the, uh, the cheesiness that you might get from using like Parmesan in a meatball. Okay. So normally um, I'm gonna say I'd use like a tablespoon and a half in a full batch. So I'm gonna use like one and a half teaspoons about down. That looks good. And then we need garlic powder and onion powder. I think what I need to do is just take garlic powder and onion powder, mix them together and put them into a container because pretty much when you use one, you use the other. Now, his recipe calls for very, very small amounts. I tend to really like the garlic and onion flavor, plus we're making meatballs. These need to be, you know, they need to be flavorful. So I'm probably putting in half a teaspoon, maybe a little bit more than half a teaspoon. Yeah, I've given up measuring. I just, I don't usually measure when I cook. There we go, that'll do. Okay, now, I need something to mix this with. One sec. Okay, what I wanna do now is mix all this together so that there's no clumps, because the, uh, the beetroot powder tends to clump and uh, sometimes the protein will clump too. Another substitution you could make if you don't have the pea protein, you can actually use vital wheat gluten to do this. You can even just use plain old flour. It'll actually work. It's another binding agent is really all it is. Um, you don't really need to add much protein to this because there's plenty of protein in TVP already, but um, it doesn't hurt if you're using pea protein or anything like that. It, it works really, really well. One and a half teaspoons of white wine vinegar. That's also known as half of a tablespoon. So I will actually measure this because it's a very small amount. So one and a half teaspoons, that's one, and a little splash. We're not gonna count the splash, so there we go. One and a half. And soy sauce, same amount, one and a half teaspoons. I'm using a low sodium. I've actually found an even lower one um, that we have yet to try yet, but um, I think we can put a link in the description for that. Yep. So one and a half. Now before you go crazy thinking, oh, this isn't Asian food, why, did, why are you putting soy sauce in it? Honestly, it's an umami thing. Again, it adds just a, a richness that is really hard to get otherwise. And it also adds a little bit of a salty flavor, which is kind of important in this kind of dish too. And then half a cup of water. Dump it all in. Once everything's in, you just wanna mix this all through. See, there's some dry in there. We wanna make sure everything is wet. Notice that color. See how it's starting to look a little bit more like um, a ground meat type product. Okay, so once you get that all mixed up, it'll be kind of a, 
semi-solid, um, should be pliable. If it looks too dry, you can always add a little bit more water, but we are gonna be adding more water later, so it's not super critical. But at this point, you wanna let this sit for at least 15 or 20 minutes. You want it to let it hydrate, okay? All that liquid needs to get soaked up by the methyl cellulose and the TVP both. So we'll be back in about 15 minutes once this is done. All right, so it's been like 20 minutes or so, and as you can see, it's firmed up really, really nicely. It holds its shape really, really well. That's what we want. It's absorbed all that liquid. We're good to go. Next is the creation of the meatball mix and the meatballs themselves. So that's why we have a sheet pan with some parchment paper. You're gonna need some water, some basil, some thyme, some oregano, black pepper, and breadcrumbs. I'm using a third of a cup of breadcrumbs. The breadcrumbs add a little bit of that sponginess to meatballs, don't be, don't start thinking that you don't need the breadcrumbs. You need the breadcrumbs when you make meatballs. It adds quite a bit to the uh, experience. It makes them less like biting into a burger and more like, you know, a meatball's supposed to be. Okay, um, for the herbs though, I'm just gonna use my hand here. A teaspoon of basil. You can substitute fresh ones if you like. Parsley is another nice one. I don't usually use a lot of parsley, I don't know why, just don't. And time. Now time, this is one of those times that you can have too much time. So, you know, just a teaspoon, please. Just like that. When he was talking about parsley, he was adding oregano. Yeah, you can add parsley, but I was actually adding oregano. <laughs> Basil, oregano, and thyme. No sage, please. Water, I'm just gonna put in a little bit at a time. I had half a cup of water, I put in maybe half of that. And I just wanna mix this all through see how much we need because it's a little bit different every time some breadcrumbs are a little bit different they require more water sometimes less water you want it to be soft enough that you can mold it but not so soft that it's like drippy but if it's crumbly that's bad too because they'll just fall apart when you cook them okay i need a little bit more water this point you got to break out the big guns for mixing that means your hands they are really the best tools because you want to get in there and really mix this through. Okay, and I've been mixing this up for a couple of minutes. I'm just, you know, putting my fingers through it, that kind of thing. I did add a little bit more water and you, you can probably see it's sticking a little bit to the sides of the bowl. That's pretty much a good sign. Now, I do have more water here on purpose because see this hand doesn't have anything on it. This one's all sticky with goop from the meat sauce, right? So if you do this, now you can break off little pieces and it doesn't stick to your hands quite as much. And I'm gonna make polpetti, which is just little meatballs. They're like ping pong ball size. That seems to work the best. And you wanna wet your hands in between each one so that it doesn't really stick to you. If you try making the huge, you know, like that's a big meatball, it's not gonna work out really well in your favor. They're not gonna cook all the way through and it's gonna be kind of a nasty texture. The idea is we're making meatballs, but you don't, you know, we can't really make meatballs because there's no meat. Now, I'm going to let you in on a little secret about this. Spaghetti meatballs is probably one of my favorite dishes um, from when I was in the before times. And it was one of the two dishes that I would order at any new Italian restaurant. The other one was um, veal parmesan. And not everybody can do veal parmesan well. And I'm still working on a way to do that veganized. But don't you worry, it's coming. Oh yeah, I have, I have ideas. But the spaghetti meatballs, it's such a simple thing and it's amazing especially since I've moved from the northeast of the country to the other part of the country. <laughs> How badly places screw up simple things like spaghetti and meatballs and pizza. What the heck? Pizza's really easy to do. So this recipe makes about 12 meatballs. One, two, three, six, seven. Yeah, makes 12 meatballs. If you double it, you obviously would get 24 meatballs, which if you have a larger family or you need to feed more than two people, or in this case, more than one person, you know, then you might want to make more of a batch. Also, these can be frozen in this state as they are right now before you cook them, 
or after they're cooked, which speaking of cooking, that's the next thing we're gonna do. Okay, so it's time to cook our meatballs. And for that, I got out the cooktop again. And I'm gonna say it again. If you're at home, please use a stove. It'll be so much quicker and easier for you. Trust me. And I'm gonna turn ours up to 3.55. No, it's like three and a half. Um, and I am using a ceramic coated nonstick pan this time. I find that this particular pan works really, really well. Plus it adds a nice contrast for photos and video. So when you look at it, it'll be a little easier to see. But this is the green pan, and we actually really enjoy working with this pan. Oh, so yeah. I'll make sure that there's a link in the description below. I'm going to be using something that you don't see me use very often on this show, and that is extra virgin olive oil. This is from La Tourangelle, and it is an oil spray. And there's a good reason why I like to use the spray. Please, before you start dumping oil in there, consider the spray, because you'll use less oil. We just need enough that they don't stick. It's really, really difficult to broth fry meatballs. It, it doesn't work very well, but I do want that pan to get reasonably hot before I even add that in there. Okay, pan's pretty hot. Give this a good, just like that. That's it. Wasn't even a one count. It was like a, just a, you know, half count. Because if you use too much, then you are just putting oil right in the pan. I mean, look, see, that's all I used. Not even enough to move around in the pan, okay? Then in goes the meatballs. And what I do is I do it one at 12 o'clock, one o'clock. This is to me, it, to you guys, that's six, I know, but whatever. Two, and because there's 12, this is nice and easy, right? Okay, so, you know, I don't end up with exactly right around the, the globe on the clock here, but it's close enough. I mean, you know, and that's the idea. Now I know that one went down first, then that one, then that one, then that one, then that one. So as I do the flips, I can flip them all in turn. Okay, so once they're all in the pan, you wanna let that cook for like a minute to two minutes per side. We are gonna finish them off in the sauce. That's important. You can also put them on a baking sheet and put them in the oven for a little while if you don't wanna put them into a sauce to finish them off. What you wanna do, start feeling for them. If they move, they're good. Oh, I can use a little bit more browning there. One thing that's really strange about this is I've done a lot of meat alternative things. As these are cooking, they smell like meatballs. They do, they really do. It's, it's a little creepy. Like, <laughs> it, it, I know it's not meat, but- What kind of alchemy is this? I know, right? It's, <laughs> but it makes them smell so good. And I think part of it is the caramelization of everything on the outside, soy sauce and the garlic together. It's kind of interesting when you really get down to food, texture and the additions that we add to things are what actually makes it taste good. Like if you just took meat, ground meat, and you made a ball and you threw it into a pan, it's not gonna taste as good as this. And I just, yeah, it's all the other stuff that we put on it that makes things taste like that. what we they say they taste like. That came out totally awkward and weird, but I'm going with it anyway, because you know what I mean. Okay, I think we're pretty much ready to flip. So let's, let's get a closer look. Okay, so I'm gonna grab that first one and flip under. See that browning? That's what you want. I'm just gonna give him like a little quarter flip there. Whoops. And go around the clock. If they stick a little bit, it's okay. Don't, don't get upset. Like this one lost his bottom. I'm just gonna stick it back on them and flip them around. <laughs> kind of move them around a little bit before you flip it and they don't, they don't tend to break. They really do smell wonderful. I'm getting so hungry just sitting there. <laughs> so what do you think? Should Derek be on the show all the time? <laughs> the ones in the center will almost always cook a little bit faster than the ones on the outside. So you wanna be careful of that. I am going to turn down the pan just a little bit. Now that has a lot to do with the heating element. Granted, we're using a countertop little mini burner, so its heating element mm, it's isn't one, going to be as sophisticated as your average stove. kitchen stove's counter or cooktop. So that's why we really encourage for you to use the one that you have available to you in your stove. Of course, if you're dorm, dorm room living or tiny house living, this might be your stove top. And if you And we're proving have that, that it's doable. It's totally fine. I mean, I can cook like this. I don't necessarily like to, but I like even cooking like when we go camping, I cook over the fire. Yeah. And I don't have any problem cooking over a fire. And pretty much once the pan gets hot, you can just keep going around in circles because they'll just keep browning. 
Okay, our meatballs are pretty well browned. So the next step is let's get them into some sauce. We just happen to have a batch of the sauce that we made in our previous video, which works beautifully well with these meatballs. And through the magic of editing, I have that sauce right in front of me. I'm just gonna dump these right in there and put this over there. I'll be right back. Got them in the sauce. I turned the burner way down, but um, it's still really hot. I just have it on one. And how long do you need to cook these for in here? Eh, 15, 20 minutes, not that long. You do wanna be careful, you don't wanna break them. They are a little bit more fragile than uh, typical meatballs might be because you know there's no egg binding them together or anything like that. So you just wanna be a little bit careful with them, but I mean, they're not that delicate. As you're cooking these, if you notice that it gets to be too dry, I did cook pasta. Okay, we do have spaghetti that got cooked. I'm gonna go get some pasta water and just dump a little bit in here. It's like the best secret ingredient in cooking ever. So, one second. One ladle, two ladles. Part of the reason why it works so well is because the starches in that water just start to thicken things a little bit more. And if you look, you can see it's got like a, a sheen, like it's shiny and it looks velvety. It just smooths things out. It is really, really amazing. Sure, you can thin it with just plain old water or you can put some broth in there, but it's just not quite the same as when you add the actual pasta water back into the sauce. <laughs> it's time to eat. So we have our tiny tasting bowl here. And no, I'm not gonna be rude. I just wanted to break one open so that we can see what it looks like inside. It looks like a meatball. I mean, look at that. It actually looks like an actual meatball inside. That's pretty amazing. Now I know these are gonna be really hot because we just cooked them. <laughs> this is where I usually burn myself. Mm. Try to get a little sauce. That is not a spicy meatball. No, it's beautiful. There's almost a creaminess to a good meatball. And these, it just hits all the boxes. You could serve this to someone who didn't know you were serving them plant-based food and they would believe this was a meatball. They're yeah. that kind of good. I like to say they're pre, they're pre-vegan good. <laughs> because, you know, like I, I was very proud of my Italian cooking before I went plant-based. And Italian cooking gets a little bit more difficult when you don't use oil and you don't use, you know, all these other things. And when you take the meat out, wow, that changes things a lot. But man, these are so good. So, you know, I want to thank Sauce Dash again for the inspiration for this recipe. Even though, in the end, these are not exactly his recipe, but they're, they're pretty close and it gives the basis for it. And um, I just think that's really cool. There's people out there coming up with those ideas that the rest of us can take and make our own, which is really, really awesome. So go ahead and take and make these meatballs your own. And as always, guys, thanks so much for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.